While doing research for the Alice 6 video, I was browsing other works by Chiaki Konaka. For the uninitiated, do road seal experiments lane technolize and other works that give me the big O. Let's be real, you're probably familiar with this guy or at least something he's touched. So I was looking at other stuff he's worked on and discovered the movie Marabito. Looking at some of the names attached to it, I recognized a couple of others. In addition to being written by Konaka, Marabito is directed by Takashi Shimizu. If you're unfamiliar with him, you'll probably recognize at least one of his other directorial works. I'm referring to the acclaimed 2002 supernatural horror movie, Ghost vs. Aliens. I'm fucking around. Shimizu directed and released Jewel on the Grudge in 2002. That movie's great, by the way. Kayako would. She can haunt me any day. There's also Shinya Tsukamoto, the lead actor of Matabito. If you're unfamiliar, he is a pretty prolific director regarding the Japanese cyberpunk and body horror scene. The movie he's probably most known for is Tetsuo the Iron Man, but has also released other bangers like Bullet Ballet and Tokyo Fist. With a cast like this, I put Matabito on the short list of movies to watch. Thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you would like to support me on the channel, you can do so on Patreon. Link on screen and in the description. If you do, you'll be thanked in the videos, be able to watch the videos a week before release, as well as receive exclusive bonus content there. Matabito opens with some perspective shots through the lens of a camera. We're looking through windows and peering into other people's lives. Then we cut to a static shot of an apartment, peering into the life of Masuoka, a freelance cameraman. Masuoka is a man of little interests, except for videography. Very rarely is he seen without a camera, and on his way back from a shoot he comes across a scene of a man attempting to stab himself in the eye. Not just attempting, but succeeding. Masuoka reviews this footage and develops a new fascination. Terror. He wishes to see the true terror that was on this man's face that led him to such a decision. This is a fucking cool motivation to see in a main character. Hella down for this shit already. It's a very unique goal to have for a main character and one that makes sense in horror movies. Hey, why is this guy doing dumb shit that's guaranteed to put himself in danger? Well, we know why. He wants to experience terror for himself, which gives him a reason to walk into horror. This motivation is multi-purposed, as not only is it the driving force of the narrative, but also clues in the audience that the protagonist is kind of mentally unstable. No fucking normal person would explore an underground crack den for fun. Masuoka returns to the scene, believing his answer is somewhere there, underground, and he begins his descent. I like how atmospheric and creepy this section is. Even before his descent, Masuoka sees some sort of apparition. Some creepy ass looking fuckers. But seeing this just makes his resolve stronger. That his answer on true terror is close. But diving down into the underground is a great scene as Masuoka goes from your standard looking industrial affair to dark and dank shit. There's a little bit of music here, but for the most part this scene is filled with environmental sounds. Mechanical whirring, echoing footsteps, clanging from metal stairs, and the only sign of life coming from Masuoka's heavy breathing. I live for this kind of shit. Masuoka comes across a scared homeless man who can seemingly read his mind, warning Masuoka about some shit called Deros, and then the ghost of the man who stabbed himself in the eye appears right in front of him. When I first watched this, I had no clue what the fuck these hyper unmelanated fish ass freaks were when I watched this. Apparently they're a reference to Richard Shaver's I Remember La Maria, a literary reference that went right over my head and didn't understand until I got curious enough to look it up. The two start talking about some conspiracy shit. Hey man, you ever thought that the earth might be hollow? Some real Konaka energy right there, just throwing in some conspiracy shit like that for some added flavor. And it's here that Masuoka emerges into the Mountains of Madness. Yet another literary reference. Can't stop that Lovecraft influence, Konaka fucking loves it. This whole conversation feels like I'm being blasted with a bunch of references to shit that I just don't fucking get. Agartha? Shambhala? Blavatsky? Look man, I'm sheltered as shit and went to fucking public school, do you really think I'm gonna get a lot of this? And despite all of these illusions being pelted at you, expecting you to understand it, it didn't change how I felt about this scene. Despite not knowing half the shit they're talking about, it doesn't change that this is still a creepy moment. 
While Marabito does offer its fair share of atmospheric horror and general feelings of unease and creepiness, the primary source of horror here is the psychological variety. Masuoka is clearly fucking unhinged. Dude needs therapy, and a lot of it. We see him toss his useless Prozac. The uh, fuck is that shit even good for, huh? It should be understood that Marabito doesn't have the most reliable of narrators. Masuoka, even before the events of this movie, was already a detached and paranoid person. He chooses to, throughout the runtime of this movie, view the world through the lens of a camera, to distance himself from reality, to view people from screens rather than to interact with them. We also see his paranoia as his apartment is littered with cameras constantly going. He installs a camera into his door, and he gets shit to stream that feed directly to his phone so he can always be monitoring. On top of all of this, the unreliable nature of his is emphasized by all the shit he starts hallucinating. Strange men talking to him telepathically, the ghost of a dead man, camera static on people's face. Generally weird shit. So we're following this guy around who is already not in a good mental place and we are slowly learning more about him. His life, his mental state, his paranoia, his questionable morals, and how he sees the world. A lot of the horror in this movie comes from learning who Masuoka is as a person, and getting Shinya Tsukamoto to portray Masuoka is a great choice. Tsukamoto already has a lot of prior experience playing these types of characters, especially in his own movies. Honestly, it really reminds me a lot of Bullet Ballet and how Tsukamoto plays fucked up characters in both. In the Mountains of Madness, Masuoka finds a chained and naked woman. Damn, even underground they're into BDSM. He decides to take this woman home and to take care of his newfound Discord kitten. Masuoka decides to call his new e-girl sugar baby F. This is when the movie starts to take a psychosexual turn. A lot to do with F gets sexual. Kinda weird, and very fetishistic. Bro, it's like you're fucking watching Mysterious Girlfriend X, but it's slurping up blood instead of saliva. And why baby bottles? The optics aren't looking great for Masuoka. F doesn't speak. She doesn't even eat or drink anything Masuoka offers until he cuts himself and F starts deep-throating his finger. I don't know if I'm supposed to be creeped out or aroused, but I'm feeling both right now. She's very animalistic, and because of this, despite her human appearance, Masuoka decides to treat F like a pet. Like he fucking walked into the pet girl adoption center and asked for the most feral one. I can fix her? Yeah, fucking right. But through Masuoka's relationship with F, we learn a lot more about him. Mostly that he's just a shit person with a fucked up moral compass, willing to hurt others for his little kitten. Not just for her though, we also learn that he's always been kind of an asshole. At some point a woman claiming to be Masuoka's wife tells him, saying they have a daughter and that she's gone missing. Despite the hallucinations, I think this is literal. That this is an actual look into Masuoka's personal life. That he's distant, even from those that he has loved. That he even treats his family like shit. And through this, you might connect a couple dots, and may even start to think that F could potentially be Masavoka's daughter. But I don't think that's the case. That's what I initially thought on my first viewing of this movie, that F is his daughter. But having watched this movie a couple more times, I no longer think that. I think F might be more symbolic rather than literal. Marabito is a heavily symbolic movie. Big head thinky type shit, not just kinky type shit. This movie is rife with symbolism and metaphor between F herself, the underground, the constant use of cameras, the literary illusions. It's constant. F is the titular Marabito. She is some otherworldly thing that eventually brings Masuoka what he's been looking for. And their relationship feels like a metaphor for Masuoka's declining mental state as he searches for his fucked up goal. There's a lot in this movie that will go over your head. Hell, a lot went over mine. As mentioned, I didn't understand what the Daros were, and I'm sure there's a ton of other shit I just didn't catch because I'm just not familiar with what's being alluded to. The references aren't obvious to me, and I just thought it was some creepy shit. And that's fine. It's fine to not understand everything, so long as enough dots are connected for the message to not become diluted or to not affect how you feel. That's fine. It doesn't change the fact that I still find the movie creepy. I'd argue most movies aren't worth a rewatch, but Marabito is. This is the kind of movie that can be dissected, and you're able to come out of it with new understanding after subsequent viewings. It's surprising to me that a core part of this movie, F's whole character, changed in how I saw her on subsequent views. 
And that fundamental change in how I saw and understood the movie only happened on a rewatch. There is value to not just an initial screening, but to later rewatchings of this movie. A virtue most movies don't have. And I'll fucking tell you, having to make and edit these videos, I end up watching the movie that I talk about more than the average person. And I think it says a lot that I can still enjoy and recommend a movie like Matabito.